So let's go ahead and get started with head pulley access. It's such a critical part of making sure you have a clean, safe, and productive conveyor is to make sure the head pulley, which has so many important components, can be accessed properly. In older facilities, it's very difficult because they didn't take into consideration a lot of the um, access needs or requirements that uh, might be needed in today's world. The other concern is sometimes older facilities um, and even new facilities, sometimes when they're spec'd, when they're built, when they're designed, some of these considerations just aren't taken um, as strongly because of the cost involved with building this stuff in on the front end. So let's talk a little bit about what should be done in the early stages of developing a conveyor and what you can do now if you have existing conveyors. I wanna share with you um, this diagram. This is, comes from SEMA. SEMA stands for the Conveyor Equipment Manufacturers Association. Many design, build engineers refer to SEMA for some of the recommendations on how to design a conveyor or some of the specs that should be used or incorporated when building a conveyor. So this information is coming from SEMA. SEMA recommends that the distance between the head pulley and the chute wall be a little more than 24 inches. And the reason I say a little more than 24 inches is because their recommendation actually says that the distance from the chute wall to wherever the mainframe of the pulley would lie, which is usually about three or four inches. So the distance from the mainframe of a belt cleaner to the chute wall should be about 24 inches. So if you add in that three to four inches that you have from the pulley to the belt cleaner mainframe, you'll have probably 27, 28 inches from the chute wall to the actual head pulley. So this dimension would be 24 inches. Their idea is with 24 inches, a worker can work from the outside or the working platform and access into here without that confined space entry of actually getting inside the chute. Just another quick uh, recommendation here. They also say these walkways, so the distance between the chute and a railing, for, for example, should be in 30 inches. This dimension as well is important. And this is recommendation of 24 inches as well. And that's the distance from the working platform uh, to the bottom of the belt. That 24 inches basically allows for proper installation and maintenance of any secondary belt scrapers that may need to be added on the return path of that belt. Okay, let's talk a little bit, uh, let's move to a different view. And uh, let's talk a little bit about the drum as we face it. Um, this is a dimension again, um, given by SEMA. And basically they're saying that the walkway, again, should be 30 inches. So a man can access the conveyor here. Another concern that you wanna be cons uh, conscious about here when designing this is the belt width that you're dealing with. If you've got a very wide belt, let's say 72 inch wide belt, you need to allow at least that much distance to access that belt cleaner and pull that belt cleaner out for installation or for replacing blades um, or things like that. So the belt width can supersede the 30 inch recommendation uh, from SEMA. All right, let's talk about another really important thing that you can do if you have existing conveyors, um, and that's really providing access to them through inspection uh, or access doors. If you look at the photo on the left, you can see this is an upgraded head pulley, and what they've done is they've added an inspection door on the side. And what that inspection door does is it allows for a worker to much easier inspect the belt scrapers that might be inside there or maintain or even make adjustments to those belt scrapers without entering that head chute. 
it's our recommendation that those inspection or access doors be as large as the chute could accommodate. So in this example, I would probably actually recommend that this door be a little bit taller like this, and it might even be able to catch an inch or so wider. And what that does is it just allows for more ability to access inside that chute. You do have to have some consideration on how big that door could be. There's always going to be a concern of structural integrity to that chute wall if you get too big of a door. So we, we say that the door should be as large as the chute can accommodate, but beware that you don't want to use a light duty door and sacrifice the integrity of the steel that is used to make that head chute. Those doors, you wanna make sure they have an effective seal. If you look at this original door that was installed, that's not an effective sealed door. When you have doors that don't have a dust or an airtight seal, air can escape or be pulled into that head chute. Dust was gonna accommodate that, um, that air that comes in or escapes at that head chute. So you wanna make sure that you're inspecting those doors. And if you have older doors, like you see in this photograph, door one, um, it's well-placed latches very well, but that's probably not a real effective seal. You wanna make sure your doors can seal out air and dust effectively. If you look at the photograph of the units on the bottom right, you see some recent innovations in these inspection doors or access doors. And a lot of manufacturers now are offering these doors um, where they have a guard um, in that area so a worker can't access the equipment inside the chute. He can inspect it, uh, but with that guard there, he can't get into it with a hand or with a tool. So it's kind of a unique uh, application that you're starting to see now as more and more facilities have safety into consideration. So head pulley access is really important. If you use multiple doors and install them strategically, it really allows for greater and um, greater ability to inspect and maintain the equipment that's inside there. If you look at this example, um, they've got a couple of nicely placed doors. Now this one, I might make a little bit wider on each side. I'd be concerned about the structural integrity of the steel, but if I could fit a bigger door in there, I would. The bigger the door, the more robust the the um, latches must be. And you see that in these two um, examples. If you can strategically place the doors like you see in this photograph, it's gonna make the work and the inspection a lot easier because you've got different access points. Um, not only should there be signage, but there should also be training to your people. So the, the people that do the maintenance on the conveyors or do inspections on the conveyors understand that only under these circumstances can the door be opened. So yes, you should have signage. You should also have training. You should have policies and procedures and protocol that says that any time, and this is best practice industry standard, this is the, the gold bar standard of conveyor safety. And that gold bar standard is this. Anytime a worker breaks the plane of that chute work with their hand or with a tool, that worker must be locked out and tagged out. So anytime they were, to, were going to put a hand through that inspection door or a tool through that inspection door, that worker should know through training that he must be locked out and tagged out. I'm not telling you, you have to do this. There's no laws on that. However, that is typically what we see from the most safest facilities in the world. They never let their workers break that plane without being locked out and tagged out. Signage as well as locked out and tagged out and training uh, should accompany anytime a worker accesses through those doors.